So today we're looking at installing a rear seat entertainment TV essentially. This is DD Auto's 12.4 uh, inch rear display. Uh, this is a single. You can also do this in a dual display and share between the two. Pretty awesome. It's your choice. But let's start with one. Hey guys, welcome back to GeekSmart, and today, like I said, we're installing this. This is a 12.4 inch display. Now, I'm going to actually split this into two videos. Not This video is going to be headrest mount exactly like it is in a vehicle. We're then going to do a second install video, and that is installing this in a Tesla Model 3. If you're not familiar, the Tesla Model 3 doesn't have the seat posts with the, the, the spikes on it. Um, so we're, I, I have uh, I actually have already messed around with it and created a nice mount for that. So that's coming in another video. I will link that at the end as well as down in the description at the same time. I'm posting these both at the same time. So to get started though, this video, let's take it out of the box. Let's take a peek at what comes with it. I've already have it out of the box, but let's get it on the table, show you how it comes. So this is what the box looks like. It shows you exactly what it is, right? It is Android power, so it does have all the smart apps and, and the Google Play Store built in, so you can put stuff on here from games to, well, Disney Plus and stuff, as long as it has Wi-Fi access, whether that's through your house or through your smartphone and Wi-Fi hotspot. It does that, cap has that capability. It also has HDMI in and HDMI out to s send over to another one of these or another display in general. Um, and it does come with a box of goodies. It does give you a AC power outlet. This does put out 12 volt. Uh, it does just have a small standard DC plug on it. Also in the box is a 12 volt uh, cord. Obviously makes sense for the vehicle. So this allows you to pull right off the battery in the, the standard cigarette plug, 12 volt plug that you're used to. Set that over here. Also, it comes with a hardwire kit. Um, so this actually has a small proprietary plug that actually plugs into a whip that's on the display i'll show you that in a second and allows you to actually not only have composite video input into the device but also allows you to hardwire it into the vehicle itself with both positive negative as well as accessory power cords so it knows when your vehicle is running and not running um, and so then it can actually uh, choose and, and decide from there so that does come with it as well um, this one i'm not doing in this video i I hope to have time to do this in a later video, so hopefully stay tuned and we'll, we'll run through the setup on that. Um, also in the box does come with an HDMI cable. However, I found this HDMI cable to be pretty insufficient. Um, I tried plugging my Nintendo Switch into it and it would not allow me to do much. Um, it all, I also plugged in my iPhone through the HDMI adapter, the, the the digital video adapter and it would not play anything from my iPhone and then all I changed out with the HDMI cable and it worked fine so I'm not a fan of the HDMI cable to give you guys update this this is or maybe mine's just faulty junk so I don't use this but it did it did come with it so I will say that then we do have a, a set of adapters um this one broke off um these are the adapters for your headrest depending on how thick the, the posts are um, as well as you got to make sure that it fits your, your how far apart the posts are in your seat post or your seat or your headrest. Sorry. Um, I will also say that not all vehicles have uh, rails on their headrests. So like my Tesla does not, it, it doesn't have adjustable headrests at all. Um, so this doesn't really work with the Tesla. I can technically make it work. I can release the headrest and pop it up, but then the cover for the back seat opens up and it's a whole big thing. It's best not to do it. Um, but that said, um, they do come with various adapters. So just to say that. And owner's manual also in the box. Um, I haven't even really gone through this at all, to be honest. Um, but I'm going to show you on the display rather than in the owner's manual. Here is the display itself. Really nice and big. It does have the seat post adapter. Or I'm sorry, I keep saying seat post, the headrest adapter. Jeez. Um, and so you can see it's allow it's a really uh, tough nice friction fit uh, adjustment also you can see where there's a switch here 
unlock and lock. Unlock allows you to actually pull the head this off and leave the mount on the headrest, which is wonderful. And then you can actually stow this. So like if you're at a hotel or you know, you're stopped and you're not gonna be in your vehicle, pop the, the display off real quick and then slide it back in, lock it. And of course you don't have to slide it all the way back in, right? Depending on your vehicle, you may have to stick it out a little bit because you have something that's sticking out a little bit and it, it locks it, it can't go out any further. It can always go in, as you can see here, but it doesn't. It locks it so it can't come back out unless you unlock it. So pretty nice in that regard. Like I said, here is the whip. Uh, now I'd put the zip tie on it, it does not come zip tied. I, put, I zip tied up, that up actually so it stays out of the way so I can keep it kind of up out of the way So I'm because I'm not using this currently. I don't have any composite inputs that I'm plugging into it and I'm not hardwiring it right now. So, but you can see the nice thing about this little whip is in the same thing with the the other side if you're running this in uh and you have a tight space this is really nice and small and so this side is all the way up front all the the stuff but this side that goes to the display nice and small you can see right there real nice and small easy to route through um moldings and stuff and then this is the other side that it plugs into it can only plug in one direction um nice and small so i just keep that right there for now just so it stays out of the way on the side here, we do have an HDMI input at the top. So that's where your HDMI in. There is a reset button because it is kind of a tablet more than a TV technically because it does have that Android built in. I would, I guess maybe it's best more of a touch smart TV. <laughs> Uh, we do have a trans flash card or a micro SD card input right here. So you can actually put media files on there as long as they're not copy protected. We do have an HDMI output. That's going to go to your second display if you so choose to get a second one. So you can want this on to, on each headrest, one on each and have two. There is a USB input as well. So we can also play media files off USB. There is a headphone jack here. So we're going to get audio out of here into your uh, car's infotainment system, whichever, or into just headphones. And then we have the power adapter right at the very bottom. That's what we're going to plug into for that. Now, also to, to make notice, as you can see, we have this where the head, the headrest adapter slides in, right? Um, if you notice this, there's a little piece, piece here. If we actually hold on to that with our thumb, you can adjust the height and actually slide it out the bottom. And so we can actually slide this in. And, uh, and then it'll lock into place. So and there's, you can kind of see, if I slide that back out, nice and tight right now. Um, there are different uh, heights. You can kind of see the rails. There's a whole bunch of rib, uh, like uh, little roller ribs there. And they kind of latch into the four pieces there. So I can go as low as probably about here. And that is about as high up, I guess you can go and then slide it all the way up to go uh, more towards the center of the display with the, with the mount. So I'm going to keep it like that, but it is adjustable a little bit if you, if you need to adjust it. And that's basically raising the display up. You can raise the display up from where I have it currently set. Okay, so that said, I'm going to go ahead and actually put this back on like I had it. Slide that back into place. Um, also to show real quick, uh, this re piece right here is obviously where it's going to go in or onto your the rails for your uh, headrest and there are two buttons if you can see where my thumbs are you push those buttons in and they open up and then these adapters right can actually go in here so first you kind of find the right adapter to go with the dimensions of your headrest and then this obviously adjusts depending on how wide how far apart your headrest is and then you can kind of go from there. Um, it is gonna be easiest to unlock this, take this off and mount this without the display after you have this mounted, then slide the display into place. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go up, I'm gonna do this on a 2022 Chevrolet Spark. And I'm gonna show you how it mounts in there. And uh, like I said, the next video I'm gonna have is gonna be for my Tesla Model 3, but the Tesla Model 3 isn't gonna use this. So what's that gonna use? You have to watch that video. Let's go upstairs and let's uh, let's play with that. So before we start, uh, these are the two poles, obviously, on this specific headrest in the this is a 2020 Hue Chevy Spark. They recommend that these posts are between 110 and 174 millimeters. That's 4.3 to 7 inches apart. Um, also, this the dimensions or the diameter of this pole should be between 10 
to what they say 16 millimeters so depending on your vehicle is whether or not this is going to work as well as it does on this one um, I've already actually played around with a little bit of these adapters um, and they all have an actual re right rating on them in the millimeters so these are 14 millimeter adapters and if I take two of them they're basically nice and tight. I could actually have both sides touch and it, it is nice and firm around it so there's not going to be any slop. If I go any bigger or any smaller, it's not going to fit as good. Obviously smaller is definitely not going to fit as good. So I got four 14 millimeter ones, but you do have a whole bunch of different ones from 10 all the way to 16. 10.2, 11.2, 16, 14, 12.9, and 12.2. That's the size of adapters. Um, but even then, you don't have to use the adapters. It's just going to make it fit a little snugger and a little bit better. So in this case, if you look at this where you have the doors that open, they're going to open towards the driver. Um, so I'm going to come in from basically the driver's side and have the port open toward me. And then also, I also want that lock and unlock button on the top so I can easily get it to get to it with my finger. I'm going to take two of these, put them on the post. Ah, don't do that. And uh, I'm going to get one side done, and then I think they'll do the other side. So I got this guy. Maybe it's best to put him in the thing first. Huh? Maybe. So I got there in that one. And yeah, maybe it actually works better if you actually put it in the arm first. Yeah, there you go. And then just close it around it. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And you might find a way to do this better than me. Great. I'm going to get the inside done. There we go. I got So I spread it apart, and now it's actually where it needs to be. And I can put the last one in the door, close the door, and now we have it nice and, <laughs> nice and snug on the headrest. That works way better than I would have anticipated. So again, and even if you open it up, it's going to see how well it actually sticks to it. Yeah, the, the uh, adapters... I'll show you real quick. They fit in here, but they're they're loose in here. So you gotta be mindful when you're actually placing it in here. And of course I put it in upside down. I didn't have the button up like I wanted it. So I'll put it in the back how I wanted it. So get that in there, spread it apart, and then close both doors. Oh that worked way better. I like that. And then you can adjust it side to side a little bit. Um, it is nice and snug, so that's nice. So now we're set, and we can actually put the headrest back down if we wanted to. Um, I'm going to leave it up a little bit just for to show this. Now I'm going to take the display, and I have, like I said, I have my little zip tied up, and I'm going to keep it back there because I'm not using that whip. But if you were, obviously, you could just let it dangle down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lock, put this to lock, so that way it locks as I'm pushing it in. And there we go. That is the mounting of the display. Now, all you really need to do, specifically if you use this for the Android portion of it where you're gonna have games or you're gonna have an actual Wi-Fi hotspot in the car that this can connect to, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the power adapter into that bottom port. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in up front. So I'll get that going here in a second. And then I'll show you what this looks like. Um, it is humid out here and it was cold in my basement so I got a little bit of condensation on there. I'm going to wipe that down. And, uh, but it's ready to go. And now I can actually show you what the, the TV looks like in place. One other thing to mention on the actual power cord itself, this is a button that you can turn it on and off. So you don't have to actually unplug and plug it in every time. There is that button. So if your port is handy, you can use that button to power it on and off. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So I don't know if you noticed, but the power port on the bottom is now red. I can just click on that. And there is a light, actually a light bar on the bottom of the display. For safety, please fasten your safety belt. All right. And then it's booting up right now. So it is Android powered, so it'll take a minute to get fully booted up. Not as long as you would think, but it doesn't take too long. And now... We are running. Date is a little off. Um, it's probably because it's not connected to Wi-Fi yet. I think it's 4.28 in the morning. It's not. But that's because it's been powered off for a little while. So I'm not too worried about that point. Uh, I'm now actually looking at what I can do with this. 
AV HDMI in, so it'll actually play off of the AV ports or the HDMI. So if I click on that, it'll give me which one do I want to play off, the HDMI port or the actual RCAs that are up there. Also, phone link, I can actually send stuff from my phone. You can actually do things with both Android and iOS. Uh, know that you are limited in what you can do, um, So, but that does have that capability. And I will probably show that here in a little bit, or uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Photos, it'll be able to play off that USB port, SD card, or in-memory photos that you can see here that it actually currently has. Uh, so I can actually hit the home button here at the bottom, it'll go back to the home. Video is going to be the same thing as photo. It'll actually play videos that are off the USB, or, well, in this case, there's a, there's a video. Well, let's go back to that, actually. Let's see if I can go to the list. So there's just the one, and that's in memory. If I click the folder, click back. So I can choose USB, SD card, or in memory there as well. So let's click back here. Uh, let's click on that. Go back home. Music's going to be the same thing. It's going to be playable play, to play music. Now I can swipe across, and here's where I can get into the apps. Now, when you when I set this up originally, I did have to put in my uh, Google account for the Google Play Store. I did that, and I was able to download uh, more apps like HBO Max on here. Um, it's it's Android. It's got Google Play, and I can download a lot of apps that I can do in here. So. All of these are capable, all of these are uh, um, allow me to play directly off those services. And there's web browsers, so I can actually browse the internet if I so choose, if it has a, a, a connection to the internet. So that's, that's the key, is making sure it actually has an internet connection if you're going to use these. Otherwise, you're going to be using these, right? Uh, and so that's probably why these come up prior it, uh, as the priority, because, well, it's an in-vehicle display, so that doesn't mean you're going to have internet. But... In the case you do, whether you're at a campground or something, or if you have a hotspot or your vehicle has Wi-Fi that it can share, there we go. We can actually play directly off the apps without going onto the phone. Now that said, I have my phone, and rather than doing hotspot, I can actually just play uh, the video on my phone and then use the HDMI adapter to plug into this display and then use this display to play those uh, when I'm not by Wi-Fi. So that's the nice thing about the capability of what this has. Uh, phone link, like I said, you can do certain things, but it doesn't allow you to play everything. So if it's a protected video, there's a lot of cases, like on my iPhone at least, I can't push everything to this display wirelessly. Um, I wish there was a way, but there isn't. So, But let's go through the phone link uh, setup. So let's hit iOS, and let's just make sure your iOS device is on the same Wi-Fi or 5G network. Wipe your iOS device to touch the AirPlay button. So yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit continue. Uh, it's iOS, this is a, a device name is RSC, and use AirPlay function on the thing. So I am on the same Wi-Fi. So this is gonna require Wi-Fi, but if I go, let's, uh, let me open up a photo. Let's start with a photo. So I have a photo of my bike. I'm gonna hit the share button. I'm gonna swipe down to go to AirPlay. And I can see one that's called RSE. And now that RSE is going to push to RSE. It's going to bring it up here. And there's my phone. There's my bike. Now I, I can swipe to the next or swipe to the previous, right? Just like on here. It's just like if I'm on an Apple TV. Exact same thing. Um, if I actually take and do a video. Um, so this is a, a video of out front of my house. You can see it's playing the video just fine. Um, let's make sure that I have audio turned up and on. And this is a Jeep actually backing in and actually hitting a pole across the street from my house. So you can hear, there's not a whole lot of audio in this, just a little bump. But you can see it's working just fine. You know, if I play videos from my phone, it's going to work just fine. But it's when you get to the protected stuff that it's not going to work as fine. Um, and I can't, I'm not going to put huge video files on here. Um, but if I do something off of my uh, Apple uh, Apple TV app, it's not going to work. And let me see what I can find here. So let's try this. This is a, an HBO miniseries. This is on my Apple TV app. I'm going to click on there. I'm going to go down and find RSE. I'm going to push it to here. And let's see if it will actually play this specific video. It is playing. I can. It is on my phone. It's not showing up here. Um, audio 
wise. Let's see if it'll actually... Nothing. But this is a protected video, so protected stuff isn't going to be able to do this because this is not an, a certified device. So, like I said, AirPlay capability, wireless capability is going to be limited in what you can actually push to this display from your phone, specifically, at least in the case of iPhone. If it's a protected video, HGCP protection, it's not going to work. If it's going to have, if it's going to be a photo or video that you have, or if it's not protected, it'll work just fine, actually. And I apologize for the sweat, but it is really warm in here and very humid. So that is the setup. I can hit the home button, go back. Good and fun. Something I wanted to show that I almost forgot to show you is settings. So in here, that's where we can actually get to the Wi-Fi capability and what we're going to connect to. If we want to connect to Bluetooth, what the Bluetooth devices, app links, things like that, where you can actually download the app that's necessary. There's an FM transmitter in here that I can actually send audio to your radio without have, actually having to plug it in. Display brightness and volume system right here. All this stuff um, and information on what model and firmware. Now, once I actually, the first time I had this connected to Wi-Fi, it had a firmware update right away. I let it do its thing. And, uh, but yeah, that's the nice thing about this is there's a lot of capability. So I would connect to your home Wi-Fi right when you get it there and make sure it's running the, the latest firmware. Oh yes, and also if you actually hit this up button, it'll actually bring a screen up where you can actually adjust the frequency for your FM transmitter, your brightness and sound settings, as well as the color of this light that's on the bottom. Um, and that's all through that up arrow right there. So I can change it to blue, and there we have a nice blue color. We can adjust any of that right there. So in the end, I am extremely pleased with this. Um, I think it's a fantastic uh, product, and this is not a full review because I don't have a whole lot of time with it yet, but I really liked how easy it was to set up, and I really like how much capability it has. HDMI in and HDMI out, that works great. It has the capability of doing composite video. It can be 12-volt wire, uh, wired to your vehicle. It can be plugged in at 120 volt with the adapter that came with it. And I can hardwire it to my vehicle, so I'm not taking up that cigarette plug. So it's got a lot of capability, a lot of really neat features to it. Um, so far, it's it, I like the size of it. I like almost everything about it. And I can't wait to do my full review of it. That will be coming after our trip that we have next week, which my kids will be putting this display to the test. That said, though, like I said at the beginning, we're going to do another video now. And that's going to be installing it in the vehicle next door, my Tesla Model 3. Thank you for DD Auto to, for uh, allowing me to do this video. Um, it's a great product so far that I can see. And uh, I can't wait to actually have a full review of it. But if you have any questions or comments, post those below. Subscribe, like the video, and uh, share it if you can for me. And make sure you check out my next video, putting it into the Tesla Model 3. It doesn't mount like this. It mounts completely different with a little adapter that I made. So, thanks for watching. Catch you back here on another future video install right here on GeekSmart. We'll see you soon.